Yeah, we can use the pliers on this. We don't really need to, but... Hey folks, welcome once again back to the garage. We're going to continue our work on this 5.9 Magnum build. Today we're going to look at putting the rings onto the pistons and putting the uh, pistons and connecting rods into the block itself. Just a quick side note here. You'll see I've got kind of a mix of things. I got new sealed power pistons uh, and some Maley rings. Originally, I started out this project and I thought I was going to try to do a semi-budget build. I went on to, I think, eBay and bought an engine kit because it was very inexpensive for good reason. Turns out that not all of the kit came. And then I contacted the seller and they're like, oh, yeah, well, we'll get all that stuff out to you. Still, not all of it came. Some of the stuff was not correct. It was it was just a disaster. So I ended up just going and buying individual parts. About the only things that I think came in the original kit that are going to be of use are maybe the timing set, the oil pump, and these rod bearings. Everything else I ended up buying individually. I should have just bought all of it individually to begin with, but live and learn. At any rate, I had to have the engine board 30 over, so I bought uh, new sealed power pistons. These are actually really nice. And took them over to the machine shop, had them pressed on. You can do it yourself, but it requires using a torch to heat up the end in order to drop the piston pin through. And uh, honestly, it's a bunch of work. And with what I paid for pistons, I just didn't feel like screwing it up. And I didn't feel like messing with it at the time. So I just took them over and had them pressed on. It cost me, I think, five bucks a piston to have them pushed on. So I paid $40 to have all the work done, which was worth it in my book. So we're going to get rings onto these next. Once we get the rings on, then we will take a look at how we insert them into the block. Then we'll take the rod bearings, put those in, measure those with plastic gauge, all of that good stuff. So let's get started. When we're looking at a piston, we've got three ring groups here. Two skinny ones and a wide one. The wide one actually will hold three rings. There's two oil control rings at the top and the bottom, and then there's an oil expander that goes in between the two. Then these upper two take a compression ring, and they are different, and I'll show you how you can tell the difference. They should be, especially with a set of uh, like Maley's or Hastings or something like that. When I open this up, they're probably in individual boxes, and those boxes are likely numbered as well. So I was actually going to go open up the cheap set of rings from the uh, cheap kit that I bought to give a comparison. And it looks like that's one of the pieces that is also missing, so I didn't get rings either. So I guess uh, that'll remain a mystery. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got for rings here. So you can see, they have them marked. These are for the top groove, these are for the second groove, and then these are the bottom grooves of the oil rings. If you take a couple of them out, I'll try not to mix them up. So this is a top groove, and this is a second groove. So the top groove ring, see that dot there? They've got an alignment dot. That dot goes up right here. There's a little bit of a bevel, right? So it's on the inside top of this ring. It's beveled. And if we look at the second ring, see how it's got that little bit of a groove that runs all the way around? If I flip it over, it doesn't have that. It has a dot here, though, as well, right? 
oftentimes, like with a Hastings ring, one of them will be black and one of them will be a metallic color. That's the other way to tell. The metallic one, I believe, is the second one in a set of Hastings. So here's one of the pistons I took out of that motor. Now if you want to, if you're reusing your pistons, and really, if you haven't bored it out, there's no reason you can't as long as the piston's still in good shape. If you want to remove and uh, replace it with new rings, and taking them out is pretty easy. You just grab onto a corner here and we get it up, and we kind of corkscrew it out. Like that. Now, you can put the rings back in by getting the edge in there and then wrapping it around. Goes in fairly easy, it's not too bad. And, you know, honestly, if you're just rebuilding one engine, that's probably good enough. But if you've got access to them, a set of ring pliers like this are really handy because you can just put the ring in here, grab onto it, spreads it out. I can just put it right over the top. When we're putting rings onto these, we want to start at the bottom and move up because if you start at the top, then you end up having to pass over the top of the rings you already put in to get to them. So you want to start at the bottom. We're going to install from the bottom ring toward the top and we'll install from this end. Before I start assembling, I like to have a nice clean surface here and make sure that nothing gets into these. We're going to set that there. I'm going to bring out my rings. So we have the oil control rings and then the expanders. Each piston will take two of the control rings and one expander. So when we put the oil rings in, might not be obvious here, but if we take a look, see this edge right here? It's got a little bit of a, a tab sticking out, and it has them on this side too. Those, the oil control rings, the thin ones, sit on top of those. So that means we've got to put this expansion ring in first, and it's really easy. It's, you know, extremely floppy. Then we've got to take the oil control ring, those are, these have so little tension on them, it's actually kind of easier to just pop it on here. It's already fallen into the top groove, so that's in. I'll take the bottom, I'll just start it in, then weave it around. The important thing on all of these rings is to make sure that the gap that you have, so this gap here, is in a different spot than the gap in the control ring. I don't even see where the gap in the expander is. So it's got to be a, in a different spot than where the gap in the expander is. And you want the gap on this ring to be in a different spot than the gap on the upper ring, right? If you stagger the gaps, then the compression uh, stroke basically can't uh, go straight through. It doesn't have a straight shot. It has to come in and then spread around the ring. It just helps prevent any kind of leakage. So I'm going to go through and do all of the rings, uh, on all of the oil rings on all eight pistons first. Then I'll come back and do the next ring up. All right, second groove. Take them all out, set them on our work surface. I like doing them this way, all of one ring set at a time rather than one piston at a time, because it helps prevent me from mixing them up. Again, this ring has a dot on it here. That goes up. These, since I have the pliers, I'm going to use them. I like to just put the dot toward me, seat it into the pliers.
and it's in. You can see there's a whole bunch of play. There's a lot of spring to it because when it goes into the cylinder, it squeezes it down like this. So that's why they're real easy, easy to put in. All right, finally, top groove. Again, you've got a dot that goes up. All right, all the rings are installed. So here's something interesting to note. Here's one reason, if for no other than to, if you're reusing your pistons, to always use a, a new set of rings. So if I take where this gap is and I just push it up, so we take a look at how much of the ring is sticking up here. You can see only the ring, right? Now look what happens when I do that with a new one with a new ring. Take it and I push it up. Look at how much gap there is there. So this ring is out a lot more than the other one. So the, the used one it's just worn, it's tired, it is, you know, it's lost spring and it is, you know, compressed in some. So it has less outward force, so it's got less ability to hold compression in the chamber and to keep oil down in the crankcase. So, I mean, that's, you know, there are a lot of reasons to not reuse rings, but that's a really good one right there. It's a good example. Thanks for watching.